Okay. Um, how's everything else going for you guys? Everything else is going fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll touch up I, uh, after service. Step away from that. for the good of the order and the good of the people. Uh, if you did not see it, Ann sent out a message yesterday that uh, Russ's wife, Kathy, passed away. Uh, you know, he's been driving down to uh, her memory care nursing home slash memory care unit and then finally hospice for ever, it seems like. And he was so faithful every other day. Uh, pushing through that. So keep Russ in your prayers as he uh, mourns what we've all been expecting to happen. But I'm sure it's a day that spending your life with somebody you don't want to see come. Um, in, in regards to that, I also heard that there's going to be a graveside service up at the cemetery Friday, uh, March or February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. Okay. Uh, graveside. Ash dispersal at 11, and then something at the funeral home. At okay. Noon. So okay. I don't know if you've heard that. I haven't heard anything about it. I, I just heard what. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's at, up at Greenwood or if it's in Samoa, but it seems like okay. it's set up by the buildings where the ashes get, you know, probably in the mausoleum area. I would okay. Guess. Yeah. Well, we can we can share it for us, but uh, keep your eye on the paper and whatnot. Yes. Carl Link Linquist. Yeah, passed away. Yeah. Uh, any, I, I've got Bible study on Wednesday. What's, what's up with the quilting? Uh, well, we kind of are going by who's around on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Maybe quilting on Thursday. Take a look. Um, any other announcements for the good of the order? I just want to say yeah. that we have a, a new to us song today. The first song we sing will be called Heaven is Singing for Joy. Really easy, but we haven't sang it before, so there's only one line that has anything like three measures. Otherwise, the whole song repeats itself exactly. Right. Just just out of curiosity, what are the dates for the, the author of that song? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, my God, 1933. I just love it when we say that 1933 is a new song. Well, it's only We're always like 100 years behind the rest of the world. <laughs> These are good songs. They are good songs. Um, anyone else? Thank you. Sorry to roast you. <laughs> Let's uh, 
prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude. gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your will. The glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the Church of God, and the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer Praise the Lord, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart for the 
company of the upright in the congregation. Bring our words to the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. of his hands are faithful and just, all his precepts are trustworthy. The heir established forever and ever, to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He set, set redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord will be given in wisdom. All those who practice it and have good understanding of him, his praise endures forever. synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And just then there was a synagogue in the synagogue. Ah, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. The unclean spirit, convulsing him, and crying out in a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obeyed him. And at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. So, we got any uh, possessed people here today? Before I get started, does somebody have a, a rebuke from Satan they wish to holler out from the pews? Uh, no? 
Well, that's why, you know, this is Jesus' first sermon. I remember in the synagogue, this is the first one we have recorded. I remember uh, my first sermon. Uh, it looked like a white page with a lot of black words, and my face was about this far off of it because that's how uncomfortable it was to stand up and deliver the word to people. It's, it's a very strange word to have to deliver anyway. But, uh, but here we have uh, Jesus at his first sermon, and he's not looking at the page and mumbling and having difficulty with this message of his. In fact, he preaches it so well that everybody's sitting there going, this is not what I have ever understood God and God's relationship to human beings to ever be. This is a very strange word that is coming from this man. It makes no sense that there is some form of a kingdom of God that is established in mercy and has nothing to do with the law. And so, and so, uh, uh, what you, what you end up with is right in the middle of this sermon, and you need to understand this. If you're ever preaching God's word to somebody, Satan is going to come and attack that word like that. Whatever good news you are speaking out of your mouth, Satan is hard at work in the ear of the other person trying to jam the message, trying to say, no, this is for everyone else but not for you. So, so uh, this is what happens to Jesus. But I want to point out that what, what doesn't happen to Jesus. Jesus doesn't end up arguing with anybody about their sins. Where is the word in there? There's no discussion about sin. There's discussion of his teaching. And this is the, the result, is that he's attacked by an unclean spirit. He's attacked by a man who's got to take that message out of Jesus' mouth or out of your ear. And in fact, they keep taking it out of your ear right up until they do take it out of his mouth at the cross. They do finally try to shut him up there. So here you get uh, a, a rebuke. I always like that word, rebuke. Uh, it, it actually means shut up! That's what he said to the man. He said, uh, he said, he, he actually said, the word is muzzled. Like you muzzle it, an animal. He says to the man, muzzle it. Be silent. Be silent. Muzzle it. And what happens? You can read down through the, through the rest. Do you hear from the man again? Don't hear from the man again. Because God has told him, be silent. If he had said, let there be light, there would be light. That's who God is. When God says something, it happens. And so when Jesus turns to the demon and says, be silent, the demon has to obey. Now, why does the demon have to obey? Because Jesus has the authority to command the demon. This whole passage is about authority. What does it mean to have authority? And in this time and in this day and age that is so tinged with human sinfulness, we have some of the worst ideas of what authority means. And the funny thing is you can go back through your Bible and you can, you can find all those times when we thought God was imbued with such authority. Let's see how it worked out. Let's take the big one. God wiped out the world with a flood because of its sinfulness. Did that work? He took one family all of one afternoon, and however long it took Moses to make wine, before they were back in the same mess that they were in, before there was ever a flood. So God has tried that route. Have you come to destroy us? is the question that the people would be asking him. 
have you come to destroy us? But really, Jesus understands that it is a demon asking him that question. And I really love that his answer was essentially, yes, I have. He doesn't say it out loud. He just says, get out of here. Muslims, get out of him. You have no possession over him. And in doing that, in saying, this man does not belong to you, Satan, let go of him, shut up, you, you can no longer use him to speak. Once that happens, that comes out of Jesus' mouth, that man's set free. He's shutting up. No more does the demon speak out of him. You know, and then he calls him out of him. And they're all amazed. I remind you, that word is mind blown. Blown away by what they've seen. And then they kept asking, what is it? A new teaching. With authority. So what is happening in Jesus coming and demonstrating what it is that his kingdom is going to be about? It's going to be about good servants that drive out demons. It's going to be about good words. God is going to be ruling this world, not all those demons and all of those sins that are running around. This is a clear announcement. My mission is against sin and death and the devil. It's not against sinners. You're the ones I'm trying to rescue. So I am here to save uh, you from this dude <laughs> right here. And how much I'm here to save this dude from himself. This demoniac from himself. This is who I came to fight. And how interesting that so many people, from scribes and Pharisees to ordinary sinners and everybody else, just look at that and go, oh, what good is that? Pilate standing before Jesus. What is true? This whole kingdom seems foolish that's caring about those people who just keep screwing up like dumb sheep just keep wandering off. And so Jesus comes along and he gives them authority. And he says, look, I am the author. What I say happens. It happens when I say it. When I say to you, Repent, it just happened. Whether or not you say, well, I don't feel like I've repented. The thing about repent is it isn't something you can do. It's something that is done to you. If you understood the, the, the uh, grammar of the Greek, whenever we're talking about God's grace and God's mercy and God's forgiveness, it's something that is done to you. Not at your request. It is done when the Holy Spirit works over your heart and says, that was probably not the best way to handle that. And then you are brought to repentance by the Holy Spirit, who rolls you around on the ground, sometimes like uh, Israel, for a long time wrestling match, until you cry out fault. Until you say, I need... I need deliverance. I need freedom from this sin that has gotten a hold of me and I can't do anything about it myself. I tried four times yesterday not to. I failed all four times. And so here, here is the, the uh, coming of Christ's kingdom to say, yeah, I know, you're stuck in that. You're captive to your sins. You're all wrapped up in each other's wrap around each other's axes. And here comes Christ to say, I'll do it. I'll take care of the three enemies. The, the big three that are ruining your life. And unfortunately, 2,000 years later, 90% of the people look at that solution and say, ah, let's go back to, let's go back to the old ways, the old Adam's way. This is just popping my head as apropos of the, the sermon. I found out that 
human beings genetically, the two, who are the two closest relatives to human beings uh, in, in the ape kingdom? They're bonobos and chimpanzees. They share almost identical DNA with us. Bonobos are, are the ones closest to us. I just heard a really interesting anthropologist talking about bonobo and chimpanzee culture. They're completely different. Chimpanzees are a male-dominated culture, and they're very violent. When a, two groups of chimpanzees meet, they'll send their male chimpanzees out to size each other up, and there will usually be a fight to determine. Bonobos, they're called the loving monkeys. Bonobos are, uh, are loving apes. They are uh, a matriarch. Society. And, uh, and as a matriarchal society, when two groups of bonobos meet, the women all go out and meet each other. And then what happens is a big party afterwards. It's because the two tribes then become loving towards one another. So but the, the, the scientist who I was listening to on this was saying, so which are we on the evolutionary chain? Are we those who encounter one another with fear and want to fight and use our power and our strength? Or are we those who want to uh, connect with others through our love? I believe that Jesus was coming down to talk to a bunch of adults that we are just not there in terms of being able to have the kind of mercy and love that Christ has for all people and for us. And the kind of grace to say, oh, look at those little monkeys. They don't know what they're doing. Look at those people who are, are trapped by their fear and acting like animals. When I have made them to, to be humans, to be the image of God in, in the way that they behave. And so, so uh, not that I'm trying to say that we are all bonobos or we are all chimpanzees. These are not our ancestors. They're different trees from us. <laughs> And I believe that we, like those animals, have lost our connection to God. You know, that we, we tend to, we tend to make our own little rules and not follow who it is that God has said you are. And who it is that God has said you are is, you're not unclean. You are not uh, an outsider. You are not beyond my mercy. That's what he said to this dude who sat there and said, you know, have you come to destroy us? The answer to that question is absolutely. I have come to destroy you. But I'm not going to destroy you by, poof, you're no longer in existence. I'm going to destroy you by making you their past. No longer who is running them and driving them drawing them out into the world. It will be me. I will gather them together. And I will show them you don't have to stand up there and go eye for eye like a chimpanzee over every sin. There is a loving way where you can approach other sinners and say, how do we, how do we avoid having this kind of inhumane violence? So, so here is the beginning. Really, we're in the first chapter of Mark. Here is the beginning. A claim has been made. Jesus Christ has authority. That authority has already been named. He is the Son of God. God said so at his baptism. There's the claim. And that Lord has a claim over you. He can 
either say, you are the guiltiest sinner on the face of the earth, or he can say, come on over to my tribe. I've been looking for you for some time. I need you in my heaven. It wouldn't be heaven without you. And he will defeat sin, death, and the devil in you for eternal life.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our community, whether it's in gathering together as first responders to care for our own who get phone calls outside of our church, or whether it is uh, for those in health services who direct us to, to ways to get help. I pray that you would strengthen our community in our bonds of service toward one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for uh, those in our congregation who are, whose bodies are deteriorating or who need your words of hope in the resurrection. We name them now aloud before you were in our hearts. Pray for our son who has a grandson who is suffering from COVID that we will pray to see strength in his body. Pray in Jesus. Hear our prayer. We pray for Ruth, Memphis, Carl, Brian, and Arthur as they return from home for this past Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good things are on. <laughs> Thank you. 
comes to help from all in through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Master has provided you with your 
Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace, love, and joy of your risen Savior. Thanks be to God.